it covers the general characteristics of waves, the electromagnetic spectrum, and sound and ultrasound. First, some general facts about the characteristics of all waves. Waves carry vibrations. They carry energy locked up in those vibrations from one point to another. One way of understanding waves is to look at water waves. When we throw a pebble in a pond, waves spread out in all directions. The energy of the pebble is transferred to the wave. The energy makes the water vibrate up and down. The waves carry the energy to the bank. You can set up a wave in a rope by moving one end from side to side. Side to side motion like this is called a transverse wave. The vibration is at right angles to the direction the wave travels. A slinky spring can carry another kind of wave. If you push and pull the end of the slinky, you get compression and expansion of the spring. This is called a longitudinal wave. The vibration is in the same direction as the energy is travelling. The wavelength of a wave is the distance from one crest to the next. The symbol for wavelength is the Greek letter lambda. The amplitude of a wave is the height from the midpoint to the crest. The frequency of a wave tells you the number of waves passing a point each second. The unit of frequency is the hertz. You can calculate the speed of a wave. The speed of a wave in meters per second is equal to the frequency in hertz times the wavelength in meters. That's V equals F times lambda. All waves, including electromagnetic waves, also have the properties of reflection, diffraction and refraction. Look out for these properties in the next clip. Now, in order to understand the properties of electromagnetic waves, we need to look at waves which we're more familiar with. Water waves have the same properties as electromagnetic waves. Here we're able to look at the waves in a more controlled way. A small electric motor agitates the water, generating what are called plane waves. A property of waves which is easy to take for granted is reflection. Here we can see the plane waves approaching the surface and being reflected. A less familiar property of waves is that they can bend round corners. This property is called diffraction. All waves have the same basic properties. Although we can't see electromagnetic waves, we can show that they diffract in the same way as water waves. Light is also refracted, that is slowed down and bent, when it passes through a different medium like this glass block. With light waves, a prism slows down the different colours that make up white light by different amounts. The blue light is slowed down more than the red light, and so it's bent through a greater angle. There's another very important feature of refraction. As you increase the angle at which the light strikes the block, so the wave is refracted more. Eventually, beyond a certain angle known as the critical angle, all of the light is reflected from the surface. In other words, it acts just like a mirror. This is known as total internal reflection. Reflection is the change in direction of a wave when it bounces off a surface. Diffraction is the change in direction of a wave when it passes close to the edge of an opaque body or through a narrow slit. Refraction is the change in direction of a wave when it passes into or out of a different medium. Waves can also be absorbed when they pass into a different medium. That's it for the characteristics of all waves. Next, the electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic waves are transverse vibrations in electrical and magnetic fields. 
They can travel through a vacuum and do not need a medium to travel through. Electromagnetic waves all travel at the speed of light and exist over a great range of wavelengths called the electromagnetic spectrum. Here is the electromagnetic spectrum with very short gamma rays at one end and very long radio waves at the other. Visible light is only a small portion in the middle. During the next clip, make a note of the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum and what they're used for. The only part of the spectrum we can see is called light. But how does this sun light reach Earth? Well, light is made of waves. These waves travel incredibly fast, taking only eight minutes to travel the 135 million kilometers from the sun. They travel in straight lines, and we sense them here by entering our eyes. The color of sunlight isn't really white, but made up of a whole range of colors. The best way to prove this white light is made up of lots of different colours is to use a prism. A triangular piece of glass which can split the white light. When you split white light with a prism, these are all the colours you get, from purple right through to red. But what makes these colours, known as the spectrum of colours, different from each other when they've all come from the same white light? Well, the answer is in how the coloured light waves move. If you look closely at the red light wave at the back, it moves in a different way from the violet one at the front. The difference is that the red wave is longer. It has a longer wavelength. The violet one has a shorter wavelength. And that's what makes all these colours different from each other. They're wavelengths. Our eyes can see all these colours. But are there any outside this range we can't see? In fact, there are. Beyond the colour violet, there's a whole world just as colourful. Although our eyes can't see it, there are other eyes that can. If you were a bee, you'd see a different range of colours. Bees can see ultraviolet light waves. Ultraviolet light also comes from the sun, but we can't see it. While this flower looks yellow to us, the ultraviolet light could make it look like this to the bee. So bees can see beyond what we can see at this end of the spectrum of colours. But what about the opposite end? Could there be anything beyond red? In here, I could hardly see a thing because my eyes couldn't pick up any visible light. The only way to see me clearly here is to use infrared waves, a part of the spectrum beyond red. In fact, security cameras can see me clearly. They're using infrared, a part of the spectrum my eyes can't see, but there's a camera sensitive to infrared that can see me. Cameras that can detect infrared waves are more and more common these days. But there's another part of the spectrum, again invisible to us, that's so frequently used it's easy to forget it's part of the same family of waves. X-rays. They're used every day in hospitals, and what makes X-rays so special is that they have a very short wavelength and can actually go right through your body, as Joe Gledhill explains. Move you down like this, so the right bit of you was underneath the X-ray tube. The X-rays would come from up here, go through you, through the table, and down onto this X-ray plate under here, which is, has a special film that's sensitive to X-rays. Well, to produce a traditional X-ray like this, it's really very simple. As the X-rays shine through the body, they're stopped by the hard parts of the body. We get a white area. The soft parts of the body don't stop the X-rays, and they go straight through. So where the X-rays land on the plate, 
we get a blackened area where the X-rays don't come through, it comes out white. There is a whole family of radio waves. Microwaves with wavelengths of up to a few centimetres carry the signals for satellite television. Longer wavelengths transmit BBC, ITV and Channel 4. VHF is used for emergency services communications and for local radio. Short, medium and long wave radio transmits over longer distances. At this part of the electromagnetic spectrum, the wavelengths can be over 1,500 metres or a mile long. Travelling at the speed of light, 300 million metres per second, are many different kinds of waves. The visible spectrum is only a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. All these waves have the same properties, but it's the wavelength that determines how they're used. Name five different types of electromagnetic radiation. To start with, there's the visible spectrum of light, from red to violet. There's ultraviolet light, with wavelengths shorter than violet and outside the spectrum visible to humans, though some animals can see it. There are X-rays and gamma rays, with even shorter wavelengths, and used in medicine to penetrate the human body. In the other direction, there's infrared, with wavelengths longer than the visible red, and used in security cameras and TV remote controls. Finally, there's a range of longer and longer TV and radio waves. There's a detailed table of the electromagnetic spectrum on the GCSE Bite Size Physics website that you can print off and have a good look at. That's the end of the electromagnetic spectrum.